with nitromethane, the power, nearly 4,000 horses. Top fuel drag racing. There is nothing like it. Our first matchup will have Butch Blair all the way from Martinez, California, up against Pat Dakin from Dayton, Ohio. Blair, a really interesting story. He barely made this field, although he qualified fourth. His crew had to work all night to make it happen after he blew up just before the first round of qualifying. One of the parts in the fuel system fell off just when we took off on the starting line, which just basically shut the fuel off, and the blower was putting, doing its job, putting the air out, but there was no fuel to go along with it, so we cooked her, you know, immediately and just blew it up. You know, conservative, it's 15,000 bucks, you know, but, you know, by the time you add up all the nickels and dimes, it goes with it, you know, $20,000. That's a lot of nickels and dimes. You'll notice also Blair using that aerodynamic front end as the car stage. It'll be Blair in the near lane against Pat Dakin with a much more traditional dragster. Good, clean start. Looks like Blair's doing well. Smoke from Dakin's tires, but Dakin pulls it out. Dakin taking the win with a high gear charge right there. Very impressive numbers. 542 at 263 miles per hour. Good close look there at the two big round magnetos on the car of Jack Ostrander out of Pontiac, Michigan. And his opponent in this next round of top fuel as Ostrander looks a little confused there. This man, Jack Ravel, who is waiting to make his burnout. Well, Ravel was having a lot of difficulty with the car, and it looks like uh, they haven't exactly gotten it cleared up. The crew chief bending over, talking to Ravel. There you see Ravel's wife, who also helps work on the car. And let's see what they're going to do. They've shut the car down. A ah, terrible disappointment for Jack Ravel. You saw his hands in the air, so it'll be a bye for Jack Ostrander. The lights come up. And all he does is come off the line and coast it. Well, Ostrander's saving the engine. Why strain the motor? All he has to do is get the car going, put the clutch in, and let it drift down to the quarter mile. And he has his win. He'll go on into the semifinals. Not very impressively, but he'll get there. He will not get lane choice, which goes to the guy who has the low ET and the fast time. And so Jack Ostrander is just going to be happy to be there. He'll save that engine for another run. And that is a significant technical point, Ted, because they really tear these engines all the way to the ground between rounds to get him ready so he probably saved himself some time right there our third matchup will pit earl whiting second qualifier in the field out of montesano washington and his crew too had to do yeoman service to get him in the field in fact it took him his last run on saturday the only run he made before he qualified in top look field. at that flash did you see the flash i think he's heard a blower right there i believe the earl whiting has injured the floor now he may not be aware of it let's take another look at it and maybe we can get a better view of it if we can play it back in slow motion Watch Whiting coming. Now keep your eye on the upper corner of the screen. There you see it very well. He actually has injured that blower, but the car is still running, Bob. Here is his opponent, Bob Strauss, the number seven qualifier out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. We'll have to watch and see if Earl Whiting, there you see his car. And I don't see anything coming out of those headers on the right side, Ted. Well, the car is still running. He's backing the car up, and we'll see if the crew chief, Tim Farrell, can pick up on this, that that blower has been injured. He may stage the car and actually try to run it if he doesn't know that he's hurt something on that motor. Earl Whiting backs up for all the world, oblivious to the fact that there was a huge explosion during his burnout. There you see the eyes of Earl Whiting. And is he going to try to run it? Well, the crew's back there with the engine looking at it right now. Whiting's starting to pull into the staging beams. He does not realize that he has hurt that engine. Now, anything could happen with that blower hurt right now. This is actually kind of a scary situation in drag racing. Strauss will be in the far lane. In the near lane will be Earl Whiting. Let's keep our eyes on the veteran out of Washington and see if that engine will work for him. There it goes. Predictable. We knew something could happen. That blower was hurt. Meanwhile, Strauss breaks loose on that single run. He didn't realize that Whiting was out of it. Whiting's not sure what happened. He knows he lifted the blower. At any rate, Strauss with a 724 to take the win. Let's take another look at it. Watch the left side of your screen. There goes the blower. Now look at the pilot chute over on the right side of your screen. Strauss has, has dropped the chute, doesn't realize it. There's another angle of that blower explosion as Whiting comes off the line. Let's look at it one more time. Look at the fire in that left lane. Now the parachute blossoms completely over there on Strauss's car, and that's why he's going down the track not understanding what happened. But an easy win. Well, they don't all happen at 5 seconds and 250 miles an hour. As you watch the crews at work burning the oil off the track from the whiting blower explosion, let's take a look at a guy who's going to be coming up in the next round of eliminations, Gene Snow, who set this track on fire with an ET of 5.18 in the first round. Well, we were really 
please. We were the first fuel car to go down there, and I didn't think the traction would be that good, but it was excellent. Could have used a little more power. Maybe we'll run better today. Now, this is a new car from last year. It's a longer car, high gear only instead of two-speed. This is a state-of-the-art, so it should run a little better. Well, that can't be good news for the rest of the field because Snow is the two-time IHRA world champion. His opponent in the first round in a radical-looking machine is Don Kohler out of Troy, Michigan. There you see the bodywork enveloping the engine and the header. Here is the snowman, Gene Snow out of Fort Worth, Texas. Brand new car, and it is really working for him, Ted. This is a David and Goliath matchup, if there ever was one. Don Kohler, the Michigan car, towed a long way down here. Actually just put this car together in his garage this week. He's not really sure what it's going to do. Was lucky to qualify in the field, and who does he get first round? The king of the mountain, Gene Snow. Snow went through a couple of blowers himself in the qualifying rounds, just getting here to the quarterfinals in top fuel. Snow will be in the near lane in the white car. The far lane will be Don Kohler out of Troy, Michigan. The cars are staged, and they're away, and Snow breaks the line. What an upset. Don Kohler runs it all the way to the finish, gets a little squirrel at the end, but out pops the chute, and there is one happy driver in that car. Well, that's an extremely short wheelbase car, very difficult to handle in a 684. Normally would not be a winning time, but it is now as it looks like Gene Snow has lifted a blower. So the blower rush continues here. And that is bad news. We've seen the second and top qualifiers in the top fuel field blowing up at the start line. There you see the crew on hand in case there's any residual fire for Gene Snow, but it looks like that car's under control. Let's take another look, Ted. Watch Gene Snow as he tries to leave the line. We'll see the blower explode and come kicking out the side of the engine. There you see it, the puff of fire. That uh, blower actually splitting right in half and moving off the left side of the car. Well, there you see the disappointment in the eyes of the snowman. Gene Snow, an oil man out of Texas, he's done for the day. So our matchups in the semis of Top Fuel, Dakin and Kohler in one each, and Strauss will meet Ostrander in the other. We'll take a short break and come back. We'll get a pit report from Brett Kepner and take a look at the Nitro Funny Cars, IHRA Drag Racing, continuing here at Arlington International Dragway, where a rash of engine explosions is plaguing Top Fuel, and Brett Kepner has a report. Waiting qualified number two in this top fuel dragster program at 5.22 seconds. The Washington driver probably thought he was going to have a heck of a good weekend here at Darlington International Dragway. Instead, it turned into an absolute nightmare with that first round engine explosion that we saw. This is the aluminum key black engine block that is normally in Whiting's dragster. Crew chief Tim Farrell has pulled it out. You can see this hole. That's where one of three connecting rods that broke came right through this aluminum block. It cracked the block all the way up to the cylinder head deck, meaning this $5,000 engine block is useless. The $25,000 bottom end of the motor is equally damaged. This is the cast iron sleeve, or the actual cylinder that goes inside each of the cylinder holes in the engine block. Looking right down the center, that's a piston and the connecting rod broken off and wedged inside the cylinder, something you don't ever see in these machines. The left side cylinder head on this machine is equally damaged. You can see where the incredible amount of heat inside these cylinders broke through the actual combustion chamber and started melting the cylinder head all the way across it. Again, every once in a while you'll see it happen in one cylinder combustion chamber or two, but not all the way across the cylinder head like this. One of the safety features incorporated into Earl Whiting's top fuel dragster did perform its function during this tremendous engine explosion, however. This is an explosion blow-off plate. This is what it looks like when it's closed up. That did do its job. When the supercharger exploded on top of the intake manifold, this opened up to relieve a lot of the pressure. The supercharger did blow off the intake manifold, breaking all the bolts that hold it on, but the damage to the pieces on top of the supercharger, including the fuel injection system, were minimal.